Hey everyone, I have Adam with me here today to learn about APRV. But before we start, um, I just want to say quickly that I want to dedicate this video uh, to my father-in-law. My father-in-law is a physician in Staten Island, New York, uh, who died last week uh, because he was caring for his patients who had COVID. Um, so this goes out to him. Uh, so we love you, Dr. Alex, or um, I like prefer to call him Lolo. So I love you, Lolo. Okay, so let's move on, okay, Adam? Um, so we're gonna talk about airway pressure release ventilation today. This is very similar to one that we did already last week. So folks at home, if you haven't watched the ventilator basics for non-intensivist part two, please go back and do that before you watch this video because uh, it'll feed into what we're gonna learn. So Adam, if you were gonna order ACPC from your respiratory therapist, what would you ask for? So there'd be five things that I'd ask for. So the mode for ACPC, uh, respiratory rate, P high, a PEEP, and an FiO2. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so if you had your patients on these settings, say we chose a respiratory rate of 12, uh, a P high of 15, a PEEP of five, and an FiO2 of 40%, and you wanted to, this your patient wasn't oxygenating well enough, and you wanted them to oxygenate better, how would you do that? Um, so I would look at the, the PEEP and the FiO2. Okay, perfect. Which is generally how we think of it. And that's why we write it this way, right? These are our ventilation parameters. These are our oxygenation parameters. Okay, so we generally think of using these two parameters as a way to increase oxygen. But I want you to shift your thinking for today. We're gonna incorporate another variable which is your I to E ratio. So instead of thinking of this number as your PEEP increasing oxygen, I want you to think about your mean airway pressure increasing your oxygenation, okay? All right, so if I had you on these settings, I would have a PEEP of five, I would go up instantaneously to 15, I would stay there for some amount of time, I'd come back down to my baseline, and then I would do the same thing. And whether the patient tried to take a breath or the machine tried to take a breath, either way, it's gonna be the same kind of looking breath that is gonna be cycled by time, by your I to E ratio, okay? So let's say uh, for a respiratory rate of 12, that's five breaths, five seconds per breath, right? So let's say this is one second and this is four seconds, okay? So that's our I to E ratio will be one to four. Cool with me so far? All right, so that's all fine and good until I get to a place where my patient is now at a P high of 30. Do we ever wanna go higher than a P high of 30? We do not. We never want to, right? That's like the equivalent of our plateau pressure on this setting. We don't wanna damage lungs. We never wanna go above 30, okay? And then let's say that our FiO2 was 100, oh, not 10, 100 right? Then I'm starting to struggle more about how to help my oxygenation. Okay. So if we get into that situation and we have a patient with severe ARDS and we want them to be on a different mode that would help them oxygenate better, we think of shifting from this mode, ACPC, to airway pressure release ventilation, APRV. Okay. And this is what that would look like. So now we sort of go through a progression. This is ACPC. Once I extend this T high longer than my T low, now I'm in a vase we call bi-level, meaning two different levels of pressure. Okay, cool. And then as we progress even further along this continuum, so that would look like that, we get to something that actually resembles that. So we're at that P high almost all the time. Does that make sense so far? That does. Okay, awesome. So I just wanna talk about a little bit what we're talking about. So if I was here um, and I was at that first settings, my mean airway pressure would be, for one second I would be at 30, and for four seconds I would be at five. So if I was sort of doing an area under the curve of this 
area, it would be 50 seconds. And then I would divide that by the, the total five seconds. So my mean airway pressure here would be about 10. Okay, trust me on the math for now. Okay, but if I change this, and now I'm up here for four seconds, and down here for one second, now I'm 125 divided by five. So now my mean airway pressure has gone all the way up to 25. That mean airway pressure allows me to keep all those alveoli open and doing good gas exchange, okay? So that's why that mean airway pressure helps oxygenation so much. Cool? Cool. All right, so this is technically bi-level, but if we go to the absolute extreme of this, then we shift into APRV. Okay, so I'm going to take it now and I'm going to do this for 4.5 seconds and I'm going to do this for 0.5 seconds. All right. And instead of having a peep of five, I'm going to have a peep actually of zero. Okay, when we think about the settings for APRV, we think about a P high, a P low a T high and a T low and an FiO2, okay? Those are my settings. Draeger ventilators make this super easy. If we're on a different ventilator, say maybe a Puritan Bennett ventilator, we have to do a little bit of math. I'll talk about that in a second, how to do that. You can't do this mode on like transport ventilators or things like that, okay? All right, so right now, the way it's set up, my P high is 30 my P low is zero, my T high is 4.5 seconds, my T low is five seconds, and let's say my FiO2 is 100%. What's my I to E ratio now? Um, 4.5 to five, so it's nine, nine to one, one, yeah. So I've dramatically changed my I to E ratio, okay? And you're probably thinking, I've always been told never to go to a peep of zero. Have you been told to never go to a peep of zero? Why? Why don't we do that? Uh, because you don't want to de-recruit the alveoli. Right. You don't want them to collapse, first of all, because then they might just stay collapsed. But also, the more they open and close, the more of them are going to break. We don't want them to break. So we don't want to damage our lungs. We don't want to de-recruit lungs, right? So we don't actually go to five. So we have to make sure this time is short enough for us to never actually get to that zero. This is a key part of APRV. We can't let our patients sit down at a P of zero. That's not gonna work, right? It's gonna de-recruit. It's against everything we're trying to accomplish with this mode, okay? So these are great initial settings for someone on APRV. There's another beauty to having someone on APRV and that's they can breathe over this whenever they want. Okay. So we give them tube compensation or a little extra pressure support, something like that so that they can take their own breaths, feel a little bit more comfortable, move their own lungs as they want to. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I, you have a good idea of this. In reality, if I'm gonna put someone on this, I try to keep that P high at 25 so that I can give them that extra five that they can take their own breaths with without breaking that threshold of 30. Okay. Okay. If they're not super sick and they don't need this high of a setting, you can start by just setting the P high at what their mean airway pressure was before and sort of work on it from there. Okay. okay. But generally when we're starting someone on this, we're doing it as sort of an oxygenation salvage therapy. So they usually need high settings when you get started. Cool? All right, so they're breathing over it. They're at this high pressure almost all the time, not letting this get to zero, okay? We'll say that this is 25 up here. So now my mean airway pressure is like 24.5 or something really high, right? I've really optimized that mean airway pressure and I'm already op op optimizing my oxygenation. 
So now I have them on this mode. How, what do I do if they're getting better? Do you start decreasing the, the P high? Exactly, exactly. So we do what we call drop and stretch. Okay, so we go from here to maybe we would say, huh, let's go to 20. So we'll go to 20, we'll increase our T high to 5.5 seconds. Our T low generally can stay at about that 0.5 seconds. Okay, and then we do that again for 15. But I want eventually we sort of drop and stretch to forever land. What do we call it when we're at 10 for forever land? Like continuous positive? Or yeah, right? that's CPAP, right? So we titrate them right down to CPAP. And when they're on CPAP, then we can start doing spontaneous breathing trials, get them off the ventilator. Okay, so we don't ever have to take them off of this. We just drop and stretch it down. Okay. Okay. One more key point I want you to know about. So in general, when I've been doing all these videos, I always draw this curve, which is my pressure versus time curve. Okay. When you're doing APRV, it becomes really important to also watch your flow curves. Okay. So now I'm going to add time and flow. Okay. And generally what's going to happen is they're going to take some breaths, sort of be going like this, and then they're going to have this negative breath, and then they're going to start coming back. And we don't want this to get to zero. So we don't want flow to hit zero before they come back up. Does that make sense? So just like we don't want this to hit zero, we also don't want this to hit zero. Okay. Okay. So when we're trying to figure out what this optimal T low is, 0.5 is a pretty safe one to get started with, but we want to really go in and watch what percent of our end expiratory flow we're at before the next breath starts. We really want to watch what our pressure ends up being here. Okay, so that we know what our driving pressure is. We know we're not hitting zero. So we really have to pay attention to both curves. Okay. Okay. So, so every time you like drop and stretch, do you reevaluate to look at the P low? Yeah, that's a great question. So often at 0.5, you're gonna be pretty safe at pressures of like 20, 16, those sort of, you'll be okay with 0.5, but still go in and watch again and make sure that this isn't happening. Okay. Okay. Drag our ventilators have a safety glitch you can put on that's called auto release that you can set. And so this 0.5 would be the maximum time, but if I can't use that much, that uh, release time will fix that for me. Okay. Okay. So you can do that on that, but you can't do that on say a Puritan Bennett ventilator. You have to stand there, watch your curves, decide what's right for your patient. And maybe this will have to go down to 0.4, something like that. Okay. But that's really quick, right? So. Um, you'll see the patients will start dropping a little bit lower. So just keep your eye on it. Great question. What other questions can I answer for you? Um, so when, um, so about the P high of 10 is when you start considering CPAP. Yeah, you can even go higher. So I would even say at 15, you okay. can just go straight to CPAP. Leave them at a CPAP of 15, let them do their own breathing above and below that. Okay. Okay. And if you have them on tube compensation or a little bit of extra pressure support, uh, great. So one quick thing I wanna mention. So I said, if you have someone on a Draeger ventilator, you can just set it up like this. But on a Puritan Bennett, they don't have an APRV mode on it, okay? So if we were on a Draeger ventilator, to get those same settings, we would put them on ACPC at a rate of 12, so five seconds per breath, right? We would have them at a P high of 25, a PEEP of zero, and an FiO2 of 100, say, whatever you needed. And then you have to go in and there's actually an I to E that you can change. And you have to keep dialing that knob until you get this to that 4.5 to 0.5 that you're looking for, okay. as far as that I to E ratio, okay? So you have to do a little bit more math to get to this point, but it's the same thing. Okay? Okay. Does that make sense? It does. 
Any other questions for me about that? Okay, any questions? So a lot of these patients are coming in in ARDS and they get put on paralytics on mm. earlier modes. Can yeah. you use paralytics in this? Yeah, that's setting? a great question. So always in this mode, we wanna pay a lot of attention to our ventilatory status, right? Cause this can make us hypoventilate, but it is still possible to use this mode in paralyzed patients. You just have to keep even a closer eye on your ventilatory status, okay? So if generally, if you have people doing this 12 releases a minute, they're still gonna ventilate pretty decently. And we're gonna tolerate some permissive hypercapnia for the benefit of oxygenating them, right? High PCO2 doesn't kill our brain cells, but low O2 kills our brain cells. So that's what we care about. Okay, so you can do it. It's not ideal, because then they're not gonna be taking these extra breaths over it with that extra ventilation, but it is doable. Okay, any other questions? All right, thanks so much for your time today. Have a great day, guys.